Hi guys, and welcome to the On Brand Podcast. My name is Nichelle. My name is Julian. And today, as you can see, or hear, we're talking in full English. Today's a very special episode, and for reasons that will be explained soon enough, you'll find out why, um, we're talking in full English today. Uh, in the back, we have Keanu as our cameraman for the day, and a special shout out to our co-host and producer, Rudina, that couldn't make it today. We have two guests with us today. I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves and why they're here. Want me to go first? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm Davy, Davy Sloch, but you can just say Davy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work as a climate and energy campaigner at Greenpeace Netherlands. Uh, and I work a lot uh, also on what climate change will mean for the Caribbean Netherlands and mostly Bonaire. Okay. okay. Uh, my name is Jermer Bomba. I'm a community organizer for um, Greenpeace Netherlands as well, also with um, climate and energy, sorry, kind of, yeah, <laughs> translation, hey. Yes. Um, yes, and my, my focus is also to, to make sure that we, get, we gather a community to join us in our campaign for climate justice for um, Bonaire, but actually also for the other islands as well, up to Caribbean. Yes, thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a lot of knowledge on climate justice or climate change, but we found it to be a very important uh, topic. And of course, now in the world that we live in, it's very, it's a brooding topic. And of course, uh, our co-host Rudina is from the island of Bonaire. So that is another reason why we found it very important to, yes. you know, uh, do this collab with Greenpeace and specifically Greenpeace Bonaire. So uh, as you guys have heard, we're going to talk today about climate justice and also climate change. But we don't have a lot of knowledge on that. So we have these yeah. two guests that are going to educate us from zero to more specific things that you guys do on, in your everyday uh, jobs and functions. So let's, let's start out from zero. What is climate change? For the person that doesn't know out there, what is yeah. climate change? How does it impact us, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. Okay. So the best way to, to grab the context is if we think about the industrial age, Mm -hmm. This is basically where I started, that since the industrial age, there's been so much um, CO2 output into the atmosphere that is, it's caused basically the climate crisis that we're in. Because of the, the output, we, we see that the temperature is rising. We notice there's more um, forest fires. We notice there's more extreme weather, um, hurricanes we see more often. For example, with the ABC Islands, we say that we live outside of the hurricane belt, mm -hmm. but we, all, we also see that they keep coming closer and mm -hmm. they keep becoming heavier. Um, we notice uh, islands in the Pacific that are being threatened to disappear under the, the sea. Um, if we're thinking more like recently, um, Pakistan, about a third of the country is, is flooded. So we, we see the impacts of climate change all over the place. And right. this, is, this is the crisis that we're living in and we need to address it. Mm -hmm. Of course, and of course we're here today to, you know, lend our contribution to that. Um, so we're going to talk specifically about uh, climate change and climate justice in Bonaire. Uh, could you explain to us how Bonaire is impacted by this phenomenon? Yes. So it's kind of like I explained that um, we see we see um, symptoms of climate change everywhere, mm -hmm. but also in our own own backyard. So if you said if you look in the kingdom of the Netherlands, not so long ago, St. Martin was also struck by a hurricane. So we notice these 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 effects. But Bonaire, in a special character, if we look at the south side of Bonaire, is very flat. So it's very um, fragile and susceptible to climate change if we're looking at the sea level rising. Of course. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why we decided to focus uh, on Bonaire for this campaign. Okay. So you guys work at Greenpeace. Um, what, does, what does Greenpeace do? What are your efforts when it comes to climate change? It doesn't have to be specific, but in general, generally speaking, what does Greenpeace do to, to help that or educate people on this, on this matter? So one of the first steps that we always take is we want to make sure that we do proper research mm -hmm. because um, if we have the proper research, we know what's going on, we know what the risks are, and then, then, then we know where we can handle. And then it's the next part is making people aware, get them educated, and then we can start about creating change. And is that through podcasts like this, obviously, but also how, how and what other media do you guys use to do that? Yeah, so podcasts like this is one way that we can uh, deliver the information to others, but we can also... Um, we also have like myself and community organizer, but we also have community organizers on Bonaire as well, mm -hmm. talking to the people out on the field, getting insights from the people. What do they want? What do they see? So it, it's, it's a community based as well. Okay. And we have a question for you. What does, how, how does 
your position specifically uh, uh, uh what is your what is a person in your position specifically here at greenpeace do when it comes to climate change yeah so um greenpeace is a big organization right we are an international organizations we represent mm -hmm. over 70 countries um and um worldwide worldwide we have a lot of campaigns concerning climate change mm -hmm. uh and also here at greenpeace netherlands and now also working on bonaire we have many campaigns working on climate change for many many years now mm -hmm. And um, myself as a campaigner, I make sure we have that scientific backbone that Jermer just uh, spoke about it, but also that we know like what to do. How do we actually change things? Yes, yes. It's not enough to know things. How do we actually make real change happen? Real okay. sustainable change. So climate change doesn't affect people and nature and, pla and the planet so much. So we have uh, many different campaigns um, uh, going uh, mostly talking about big polluting companies. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone knows about Shell and all their pollution <laughs> right. and all their oil and all their fossil fuels. Right. Uh, so we did a lot of campaigns worldwide around Shell and uh, also many different campaigns here in the Netherlands with other big polluters. Uh, and for me as a campaigner, I um, honestly, I re just read a lot of sad news <laughs> every day about these companies and right. about the state of climate change where we're in. But at the same time, I read and I see and I talk to so many people that, and in a way that's really uplifting because real action is happening and mm -hmm. I really think uh, things will change. Yeah. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, research. You also mentioned research that you guys make sure to be educated on the matter as opposed to just, you know, saying, oh, this is bad, but you guys have facts and F um, findings and, and numbers to back, it up. to back it up. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So uh, in our pre-pod meeting and production meeting, we spoke about one specific uh, piece of research and, and that you guys uh, did, if I'm not mistaken, is, it was by the Vrije Universiteit uh, Amsterdam. Yes. Is there something that you could tell us about this? Yes, of, of course. Of course, we would like to also be educated on the matter. Yes, of course. I think... Um, um, what we noticed that was when we started looking into the um, impact of climate change for Bonaire, but mm -hmm. honestly, this is for the Caribbean Netherlands as a whole, the so also Stasia and Saba. Uh, and we f mostly focus on these three islands because they are uh, special municipalities. But I think a lot of it also goes for the other three islands within the mm -hmm. kingdom. But right now, focusing on these three, we noticed that there was very little research, very mm -hmm. little knowledge. Uh, also within the Dutch government, the very little reports about what climate change would do um, to Bonaire. So uh, we asked the Free University of Amsterdam, we commissioned them to do a big mm -hmm. report. And it looked into um, um, basically uh, three important things. Mm -hmm. What will climate change do to uh, Bonaire considering floods? So we know Bonaire, especially the south, is very mm -hmm. low lying. And we know mm -hmm. because of climate change, the sea levels will rise. Mm -hmm. So what types of flood will occur also maybe in combination with a storm. We looked into coral, coral degradation. Uh, of course, Bonaire is quite the unique coral reef all around the island. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's really entangled with like Bonaire identity. Mm -hmm. It's entangled with uh, the culture. It's really important nature-wise. Um, it also helps to protect Bonaire from flooding. Yes. yes, I read that in the in I think you guys sent us the document. I found it to be very interesting. So if I could, if I understand it properly, I'm just gonna ask, ask questions here. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. That's what we. We can. live in the Netherlands. We're in Amsterdam. Uh, Netherlands is also like basically below sea level, like yes. they just made it, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. So that's why there's no hills, there's no nothing. It's all flat, it's yes. all buildings and stuff like that. Here in, here in Netherlands, they have like things called daken, right? Yeah. That's that's what it's supposed to protect from the sea yeah. and flooding us. So yeah. you're telling me that, that Bonaire then has a natural kind of uh, protection yeah. against that, that same thing. Yeah, in a way, I think, I think that's the really nice thing about nature, right? It's yes. a really beautiful yes. thing. I think sometimes... Some people think nature is just a thing to look at, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it's 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 all intertwined with everything else, and it's protecting us. So on right. Bonaire, the, also the mangroves and the corals, yes. it's a way of protecting and 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 ensuring the island and protecting the people. Uh, and of course, it will not always be as strong as uh, a dike, mm -hmm. uh, a seawall, or a, what you want to call it. Yeah. But it does really uh, give really important value. Even apart from the cultural value and the and the nature value, yeah. Okay, no, that's cool. But the sad thing is here is that we know already. We know for a long time already um, from a lot of international research that coral is really vulnerable to climate change mm -hmm. uh, because of how it changes 
uh, things in the seawater, but also because the coral can drown in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so without getting too biological and technical, um, we know climate change is a really big problem for coral and coral reefs. So the report and the researchers from the university also looked into specifically what that would mean for Bonaire mm -hmm. and also what would it mean for Bonaire's economy. Uh, because, uh, of course, the diving tourism and the snorkeling tourism, etc., right. is a big part of the Bonarian economy. It's a big part of how, where people are working, how people are working, of course. the whole tourism industry. Um, so they also looked into that. And they also looked um, into heat because we also know climate change will um, create in the whole Caribbean region mm. in general more heat, more heat waves, uh, extremer Just heat waves. It hotter and drier. Yeah. 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 And the bit about um, uh, heat is that um, I can imagine if you like, for example, live here in Amsterdam. Uh, heat is more like a thing because it yeah, can be cold. In the summer. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 We see it as a positive thing. Maybe, so, yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. Like, I can imagine if, it, in, in a way, people feel that. But um, we know heat is connected to a lot of health issues, but also agriculture issues. So heat is actually right. a real problem. And also, like, we there's numbers from heat waves around the world where more people get ill, more people die. So heat is a really serious issue. It's just not just about a bit more sweating or, mm -hmm. you know, a bit more AC. It's mm -hmm. that has real impact. Yeah. Because yeah. on the islands, I think it's... What, 34 degrees maybe? So <laughs> if it gets... Yeah. Yeah, Celsius? Yeah, yeah, Celsius. If it gets <laughs> right. hotter, it means that people want to stay cooler as well. So I can imagine that we're going to make more use of energy with ACs, more with, um, what we say, echo. And <laughs> that kind of seems like it leads into a, like you said, a vicious, vicious cycle. cycle of, yeah, waste or, or us taking from... Well, uh, of resources. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's two ways you can look at this because on on one side, uh, yes, like if if the if it gets hotter, people are more inclined to to use more air conditioning, right? So, so mm -hmm. they can become cooler. But there's also people that have air conditioning can do that. Not everyone has air conditioning. True. True. And this is this kind of we're also going to get into what climate justice is as well. Mm -hmm. If we look at the the CO two emissions. Since the uh, industrial age, it's been the Western world that has um, has the most output of CO2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we look at who's the ones that are suffering most of the consequences, it's usually the global south. It's the Caribbean right. areas, the islands. If we look at um, if we look at Pakistan, if we look at Africa, so this is where we see most of the impacts as well. Mm -hmm. And this is also what's happening on on the, on the island as well. But not only in the sense of we have to deal with the problem, but if we mm -hmm. also look at how are we going to literally deal with it so like if we if we look at holland has plans like you said we have daikon mm -hmm. if there's a massive storm we like we were protected pretty right, much right yeah. we there's so much research that's been done we know exactly where the vulnerabilities are we're ready for it mm -hmm. however no research has ever been done for the other islands in the caribbean for, yeah so there's there's you see a difference there as well there's it's, it's not it's not it's not justice. Mm -hmm. and, hey. and so yeah. <laughs> even turning up the AC a little bit, like historically, the emissions from Bonaire, the pollution from Bonaire have been extremely little compared mm -hmm. to the big Western emissions. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think it's sort of like incredibly unfair to sort of, you know, like focus on with the consequences. Yeah. And also focus else. on yeah. right. that part. We should focus on where the responsibility lies. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, well, the European part of the Netherlands has that responsibility because they have been a big polluter. Yeah. So, no, oh, go ahead. No, I have a question. Why do you think that is that there's more attention being put on then um, what can be done here rather than Bonaire, which is also like a what's it called? The municipality. Yes. Municipality, yes. Of the Netherlands. So why we put the focus in? Why do you think the focus is the so government. much on? Yeah. Because yeah. You, you, you need to think of it as well as since 10, 10, 10, Bonaire, Seba, and Stasia are special municipalities of the Netherlands, mm -hmm. which means they also fall, what, what we're, when we're looking at responsibilities, it's also a responsibility of the government mm -hmm. of, and let me right. say, the Euro European Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a responsibility there, but n not only that on legal side, but also if, if we're looking at accountability. Mm -hmm. You come. You have the most output, and so you also have to deal with repercussions of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not that I can just keep 
putting out, putting out, putting out, and now you have to deal with it. Okay, so if, if, if I understand it properly, climate, the, the climate justice in this case has to do with two things. Number one, Bonaire is a very small country and its emissions are almost non, non-existent, non-existent in, compare, in comparison to the consequences that they live with every day because of the emission of bigger countries or other countries that have the exact opposite. Yeah. That's one. And two, uh, European Netherlands has to some extent a, a responsibility to also care for the for the climate and 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 you know take certain measures to make sure that in yeah for example these corals that not only offer a a a, a touristic site but also offer literal protection to Bonaire. So that's kind of yeah. what climate justice in this case could so be. So you need put to think you need show. to think on policy level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I live in a small town called Weisp close to Amsterdam, it's not like WASP itself is protecting itself against possible floods right. of climate change. So why would Bonaire have to, why would Saba have to, why would Stacia have to, we're all municipalities of the Netherlands. And these right. are big tasks, big responsibilities. This is what you have government for. I, I have to offer some pushback, just a bit. <laughs> um, what, what does Bonaire itself than do to protect themselves. Because of course I understand that it falls under the responsibility of the Euro European Netherlands, but I do feel like there should also be something that they're doing. I'm, I'm, I don't know what they are, but I'm just asking because I know someone that's listening would be uh, would ask that also. Yeah. I think I think also like present and also future wise. Yeah. Yes. What? yes. You, can, you can think of, there's two things you can do. You can either, you can mitigate or you can adapt. Mm -hmm. Mitigating is how can we make sure prevent. that it does. Yeah, we're trying to prevent. Yeah, and adaptation is dealing with the same dealing with the consequences. Right. If we're looking at mitigation, if we already said the the output of Bonaire has been so minuscule, it's inconceivable. Mm -hmm. If everyone on Bonaire would stop driving, stop using alcohol, everything, nothing would change. <laughs> it it doesn't have a significant effect that you can right. say, okay, right. this has been the change. Right. So. In that part, it's hard to say, okay, but now it's a responsibility that, that all the people have to, like, stop using air conditioning, mm -hmm. etc. And in, in the part of adaptation, there you have more options. Mm -hmm. However, research still has to be done into what are the options. Right. And in, if we're going back to climate justice, um, Greenpeace now commissioned this research but this is a research that should have been commissioned by the government. Right. Yeah. And not only for Bonaire, but for all the islands. So now yeah. the ABC, SSS, like all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because in, in the document you guys sent us, I read it through and we both did, we made notes and stuff like that. I, I could see that a lot of these commissions are done. So these independent parties in the Netherlands are doing these type of researches, but it's never really getting to the government. So it's never really getting to, oh, we're, we're recognizing the the the... the the differences or the the outcome the of their research, but no, it's never that. So, I mean, I, I feel like it's 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 the the research you guys did, not only is meant to educate us or educate the people, but also it has to at some point get to the point where it's, uh, 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 you know, we need to see differences in policy, like you said. So I feel like that's very very interesting. But okay. Yeah, and I think it's important to realize is that there has never been uh, research like this mm -hmm. before. It's the first of its kind. Yeah, so okay. there's also still very little knowledge and it's hard to act upon things that you do not know, right? You need right, to know right, first. Right. Um, so I think that's also why it's really important and well, it's sort of like at least helpful. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Would be right. an understatement maybe, but that there's now the research, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, are locals also being made aware of what's happening on Bonaire? So, at the point of release of this podcast, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, so, but we've been talking with people on Bonaire from the first day, before, from the beginning that we started to thinking about mm -hmm, this campaign. Yeah. But specifically, the research uh, is being yeah. shared. Uh, yeah, so they, yeah. they kind of deal with the consequences to some extent, or not. They actually do. But research-wise and with, with numbers and facts, this is one of the first times they're being confronted with like a, okay, this is factually what is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And on the basis of the research, was it then like a survey that they have to fill in or 
um, were there conversations being held with the locals? Yeah, what did it look like in practice? Like the research. What, yes. Um, so the research is is a combination of many different types of um, um, uh, methodologies, research, yeah. research etc. Because it's different angles. If you talk about health, it's a really different study than making models about how flooding would look like. Right. Um, so a bunch of different people worked on this and a bunch of different people use different methods. Mm -hmm. But there has been a lot of like uh, surveys also, questionnaires, but also a lot of expert interviews with people on Bonaire and conversations, etc. And there has also been a lot of working behind a computer and making flood models. And mm -hmm. there have been many different things uh, that took place um, uh, to get to the to get to the results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with, with you guys doing research there as well and asking the people and the surveys and experts, what were then the results at the end of the, the research as well? Like what did you guys come about? What's the conclusion? Yeah. Like, so it's good to mention is that the research is like in total hundreds and hundreds of pages. So what I can nice. tell here, <laughs> what I can tell here, yeah, well, we could be here hours, yeah. <laughs> right. but I don't think we will like manage that. So yeah. I will give the summary of the summary of the summary, yes. but I also really encourage people to go look it up and read it because I think it's really insightful. But for now, I think, so I think I can explain a little bit about the flooding and then maybe also about the coral and the heat, etc. Mm -hmm. But so the... Uh, the thing with the floods is that we already talked about it, but for the people that are not so familiar with Bonaire, so the south part of Bonaire is not where uh, a lot of people live, only like a tiny bit, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of cultural heritages. There's uh, Salinas there, uh, mm -hmm. the salt ponds, and there's uh, also some other areas where people wind surf and there's hotels and the old fisher village. And I'll, especially there in the beginning, a lot of flooding starts there. and that. Mm -hmm is permanent because sea level rise is mm -hmm. permanent um, and already like within 30 years you could actually already see to start that happen in the more extreme scenarios so the research we don't know for sure how bad climate change will be right it could be extreme or extremer or maybe we can be a little bit optimistic about it it really depends on how fast the world is acting and how fast we are making sure emissions go down mm -hmm. so the research took into account more optimistic scenarios and more pessimistic scenarios and also some things in the middle mm -hmm. right. um, so it's good to realize like the things that I say are different in different scenarios mm -hmm. but so we see in 2050 in some of the scenarios there's already flooding in the south and we uh, also have scenarios that is not just sea level rise but also has a storm because obviously storms take place mm -hmm. so this takes into uh, account a storm that happens one every hundred years and then we also see some flooding in Kralendijk but that can all, that is about a hundred years and more later on so okay. uh, um, uh, 120 years from now mm -hmm. um, and also in some other extreme scenarios we also see um, flooding more in the north of Bonaire um, but especially the south is very vulnerable for flooding, could happen also very soon. There's also a lot of cultural heritage there. I mean, Germer is from Bonaire, so he could maybe tell a little bit more about what, what is there and what it actually means to people mm -hmm. who live there. Um, but the report also made a really good effort of showing all those places and based on the questionnaires and the expert in interviews. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we see a lot of cultural heritage can also be flooded uh, already within those 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and also the, the, salt, the salt ponds, so the salinas. Um, and also flooding has an impact on infrastructure, yep. essential infrastructure. So yeah. imagine uh, roads uh, that are used for many different reasons in the south, but also in the more extreme scenarios where Kralendijk is flooding. Not only a lot of cultural heritage in Kralendijk is flooding, but also you have to think about the airport or uh, maybe health services mm -hmm. or uh, fire stations. So I think that's the most important bit about flooding and the research also shows what what uh, damage that would do, like how much money are we talking about? Right. Um, so um, it also sort of brings into account like how would it touch the Bonarian culture and the economy uh, in that sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like it's all tied together. It's definitely yeah. all tied together, yeah. yeah. That's the sad thing about climate change. It's, I think there was a while where people connected it sort of to I think maybe the Arctic and polar bears and which is all pretty right. awful but if you think about it hitting islands small yeah. islands where yeah. the core of the island an island is small so touch a bit of the island and you touch a lot of the island mm -hmm. um, right. and and inundated so the flooding uh, will will affect a big part of Bonaire yeah a serious part yeah okay so is there next to flooding are there other uh, findings that uh, you guys saw from the research? 
Yeah, so the other bit of research looked into the, 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 the dying off of the coral reef that mm -hmm. we talked about already a little bit. Um, and the research looked into like the official diving spots of Bonaire. Uh, like I said before, di uh, the, the coral is important for many reasons of Bonaire, not just the diving, but the diving is really connected to the economy, the diving tourism mm -hmm. uh, and the snorkeling tourism, etc. Um, and um, um, again, this is with scenarios. You can be more optimistic about climate change and pessimistic. In the more optimistic scenario, we see that 30 years from now, all the official diving spots, which are 86, 86 diving spots are no. still there. And um, that doesn't mean the coral will not be harmed. I mean, the research looks at the diving spots. But in the more extreme scenario, um, 30 years from now, there will be 13. So one, three, yeah. 13 diving spots, official diving spots left. This is again, the more extreme scenarios and the other scenarios are somewhere in the middle number wise. And the reason these diving spots disappear is because they don't have enough like coral anymore for actually to be useful for diving. Like people Just want water. to go there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And it will, will look totally different and mm -hmm. there will be different like a net nature activity, which right, is what right. people want, right? So. So, and also the research sort of looks in how that would impact the economy again. So it also has some numbers about that. I won't, read, but people could look into that if they want. And um, what's important to realize that the research looked from now until 2050, but we know from like international research and that is really, yeah, well, oh, um, authoritative research. Like there's no questions about it mostly. Right, right. We know that coral degradation will go on after 2050. And in a lot of scenarios, most likely at the end of this century, there won't be much of the coral left also on Bonaire. Um, so it's an issue that will go on in time and it, it might be different in 2050. We don't know how bad it will be, but at the end of the century, it will be it will be a really big problem. And we'll still be impacted by it. I think our generation for sure. Yeah. And yeah. the one that comes after it. Yeah. So it's kind of like important to act now. Otherwise, the people that live there and the people that have to follow up don't have the opportunity to experience that. Yeah. yeah. If we're thinking about the question of why should we act now, the sooner we act, the more we can, this is about medication. So the, mm -hmm. the more we act now, the more we can, we can hold back these changes. And that's why it's important that not just people on Bonaire, but also Holland and the rest of the world, everyone needs to get on board. Right. So, uh, to the, the, so if I understand it prop, right, <laughs> there's flooding. That's that you guys researched some flooding and found found things about flooding, also damage to the coral reef, and the other other one would be then heat. Yeah, right? heat, heat and, and in health. general more health problems. But yeah. a lot of the health problems are related to heat. Um, um, if I could say one more thing about the yeah, corals, by the way. <laughs> The one thing you have to keep in mind is that what's pretty unique for Bonaire is that there's pretty awesome coral reef protection. Like there's a lot of efforts done. So keep that in mind and then still these are the results. So think about other islands that are maybe less fortunate in the way that their coral is being protected. Right. Um, and it could be worse, but this is taken into account the fact that it is already well protected. Okay. So I just wanted to sort of underline that, that those efforts are there and that's great. Um, and the health part, is mostly connected to the heat. Of course, the heat will also give different problems like we already talked about, but what the research looked into also was public health. Um, climate change in general will be a problem for health mm -hmm. uh, um, in different ways. And for Bonaire and also for the Caribbean region, but for Bonaire specifically, um, um, we know of a few different things. First of all, um, uh, heat and heat waves are really uh, a problem for people that already have diseases or people that are uh, older, so like elderly people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, like cardiovascular diseases or um, uh, other type of diseases, heat is really like sort of aggravating those yeah. symptoms and right. people. So we can expect based on this and based on other things that there will be more diseased people, more people could die because of yeah. these things. Yeah. And another big problem is that, um, this sounds a bit odd, but like climate change can make a really more comfortable situations for certain tiny, tiny animals like mm -hmm. ticks and mosquitoes. Right. And they come with a lot of diseases like Zika or Dengue. Yeah. Uh, and if the, con if the circumstances indeed get better because of climate change, mm -hmm. there's more of these ticks, there's more of these mosquitoes and there's more of these diseases. And a third and final thing that I think is um, good to point out because I think 
um, it's also really important, like, like there's physical illness, but there's also mental illness. Right. And mental illness uh, can also really be affected by climate change, either because it really impacts you so much and you think about it so much and you get stressed about it, or because a big event happens, mm -hmm. uh, like a flooding. Also. Or because you already have struggle with mental illnesses and then this aggravates, like maybe the heat gets to you extra and stuff like that. So that is also in short the, the, what the research has said about the health. So now, of course, we spoke about what the results of the research were, but I mean, now we're speaking about it. If someone would like to read it in full, uh, where can they find it? Okay, so this research at, at this point of the release of the podcast is going to be available on our website. Mm -hmm. So if you go to greenpeace.nl slash Bonaire, mm -hmm. then you can find it. Well, I tried not to do that. The description <laughs> below, you know, yeah. plug it up somewhere here. Of course. But you can find it there. Um, you can read it out. Um, you can also follow our social media. So we're also going to post the links to our websites also from there. Of course. But in the in the coming um, period, we're also going to be hosting more events in which we're going to inform the people as well. So if you also um, if you think reading this is too academic, it's, it's not for me. Try to come to one of the events, or if you say um, you want us to come to your school to talk about it, also let us know. So we're here to also inform you in any way that you feel necessary. Okay. Before we go to our last part, it is very important for us to, you know, address Rudina's questions. She, she could not be with us here today, but as our resident Bonarian in the on-brand, <laughs> you know, space, yes. uh, it's important that we answer her questions and yes. we made sure to ask her. Uh, to give us some questions. So the first one will be, and I quote, nature is a huge part of Bonaire's heritage, cultural identity, and of course, brand, pun intended. Uh, is there enough awareness among the local Bonaireans about the climate developments that could potentially affect the island if measurements are not implemented? If not, how can we change that? And if so, how can we enhance that? Yeah. So I think it's it's good to know because since we've been talking to people as well, also on Bonaire, so we also have community organizers there, mm -hmm. people do notice the effects. We do notice that there's more hurricanes, that it's, it's getting hotter. We, we notice we, we notice coral bleaching is going on. So like we see the effects of, we see symptoms of climate change. Mm -hmm. However, um, for even for us, without this research, it, 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 we didn't have a full view of what everything that's going on and how it right. impacts and how it links. Because it's also important to know that, for example, it can be hot and dry, meaning I can't grow food, meaning I don't have food on the table. So there's consequences to, right, to everything. Right. It's a so chain it's, reaction. It's a chain reaction. So I think people do notice and they are aware of there's change going on, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's too abstract to grasp. And it's, mm -hmm. so, so we hope that this research makes it more concrete so it's, it's more clear for everyone as well. Right, okay. So the next question is, and then she starts with a quote, which says, if we want to see change, we need to start with ourselves. So her question is, how does Greenpeace plan to reach and activate the local community in order to reach its goals? In other words, what can inhabitants of Bonaire do themselves to demand action from the Dutch government? Okay. So one is talk to our community organizers there as well. Mm -hmm. And we as Greenpeace, um, together with some locals of Bonaire, we're going to sue the government. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. okay. That, yeah. that's, okay. No, that, 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 that'll do it. Yeah. 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 Breaking okay. news. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yes. Okay. But so, so one of the steps we're going to take, and to say again, this is one of the steps we're going to take. This is not the only one, and it should not be the only one. It's one of the steps we're going to take is we're going to sue the government, and we're going to do this with locals of Bonaire. So okay. we want you also to like support us also and support also your locals that are also in this, this, this lawsuit. Yes, of course. And yeah, also support like the local uh, organizations that aim to protect the, the flora and fauna, which is like yeah. Yano said, Stinapa yeah. is one of them that really does a good job. So I think that would, could also help yeah. a lot. Okay. Not to pull away because we're going to loop back to this, but yes. So there's two things. We have the locals on Bonaire, mm -hmm. but we also have the Caribbean diaspora here in Holland as well. Yeah. Which you're part of. <laughs> which, which I'm part of, and, and you we as are well. Also. And yes. I think a lot of, also a lot of the listeners. So there's there's a lot of different ways that, that everyone can do their part. So if you mm -hmm. think my part is I'm going to share that podcast with my family there, that's, that's one way part. of getting the information out there. If you say, 
I want to become an activist. Sign up. If you want to say, like, I don't want to become an activist, but I can cook. I can cook at some time to the <laughs> right, bed. Right. So, so there's there's different ways that you can help. So right. donate. Even yeah, you can donate. You can sign petitions. Um, also, we're gonna have a brown brief for Loretta. So also sign a petition in the links below. Hey, look, everything um, is in the link, boy. <laughs> everything is a link. But so there's different ways. Right. And if you don't know how you can help, but you're enthusiastic about helping, reach out to us. You can reach out to us on our social, so the, the Instagram, email, and we'll find a way. Mm -hmm. We want to work together. Okay, that was gonna be my next question. <laughs> what are the follow up steps or call to action? But yeah. sound like you 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 covered it. For example, yeah, and, and if I I think it's maybe important to add because sometimes there's a little bit of confusion about this. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are announcing that we plan to start a lawsuit against the government, and when we say government, we mean the government in The Hague, so the national government. Right. Uh, so not the local government in Bonaire. Um, uh, and we will start hopefully this year. We haven't started yet, but we are putting it out there. We are spreading the word about this, and like Jermer said, people can chime in. And uh, so it will be directed at the national government, yeah. And for example, because you mentioned the, us being here, the, the diaspora that is here, it always feels like we want to help, but we can't because we live here. For example, how can we then, in a, it, for me at least, in a practical way, help you guys with the mission? Yeah, you can see this mission as, as many, many different parts, but every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you look at the nature of Bonaire, the corals in itself is not the only answer, but it helps. The mangroves, it helps. This is, different steps helps. Mm -hmm. So even here in Holland, if you find a find a way, there's this different ways to connect, I don't, if it's through education. But for example, in November, we're also doing uh, an action, yeah, actually, protest uh, for Schiphol, one of the really big polluters here in, in the Netherlands. Contributing to that is also contributing to the bigger cause, which has effect on Banana mm -hmm. as well. So you can also sign up for that, so you also gain experience, gain knowledge, and that you can also use again in, in this campaign as well. Okay. And I think also people sometimes have great ideas that we do not come up with. Like that makes a good campaign. It's that people come to us and they say, I want to do this thing or that mm -hmm. thing. And I think that really helps. And then I think Germer would be like really open to all those ideas yeah. and mm -hmm. people that want to help and invest in the campaign because uh, a lawsuit is one thing, but there will be many other things we can all do together. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have any ideas, send it to us. Uh, I have a question, which I think it's important. Um, and I learned this from, from, you know, from working in podcasting, but also from working with other people. When, when, when you give, like, critique, it's also important to give, like, an alternative of, okay, this is what you're doing wrong, but this is, this is how it could be done better. So what are the efforts or, or in practice, what are the things that Greenpeace does or tell the government or the people that are contributing to these emissions or pollution to do better? Do they give the, the alternative of, you're doing this wrong, but this is how you could do it better? So that would be my question. Yeah, I think so. One thing to underline is that within this specific campaign, in case we're talking about of Bonaire, I think it's a really big injustice that is happening, right? Like if right. you look at how Bonaire is protected uh, of climate change by mm -hmm. the national government, it's very, very little. So right. I think this is such a big injustice. Um, we cannot address it any other way. We should address it and we should not like be careful around it. We don't be, right. we, we right. can be, we can be really honest about it and we can be straight yeah. about it. But in general, Greenpeace does uh, a lot of campaigning. And um, um, to be really honest, a lot of the answers are out there. And we contribute to many of those answers. We do really many researches. We bring out many reports that talk about how, for example, um, um, uh, the energy transition, as we call it in the European part of the Netherlands, so how our society can re run on green energy, sustainable right. energy. And for many different areas, there's there are solutions. Uh, talking about cars, we have uh, this beautiful thing called public transport that can run <laughs> easily. I don't know if it's beautiful, but yeah. It could be beautiful. <laughs> it and in general, be. it's pretty beautiful because you sit in a train and you can watch yes. a movie on your laptop and that you cannot true. do that while driving and somebody else is, is taking true. you there. And it that is, is run, and then mostly it's run on uh, windmill wind power so it's pretty beautiful and for many other areas we, we know very well what to do i think the question is about taking are we step. willing to yeah. do it are we taking yeah. that step are we putting ourselves out there or are we being you know like a little bit like nah it's complicated it's scary there's so many different like 
um, uh, reasons that people do what they do or do not what they do. The solutions are out there. We need systemic change. We need mm -hmm. different ways of thinking and we need people to make bold choices and we need our politicians to be leaders. Uh, and I think we always, as Greenpeace, give them many options, many solutions. Yeah. And they have to act on it. Yeah. Yeah. This makes me think about like Curacao, where we're from, where it's like always this, this notion of, oh, this stuff, uh, electricity is so high and all that, but like we live on an island, we can literally ransack the whole thing, flip it into solar yeah, energy. There's always that, sun like, and there's always wind. Like stuff, but it, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a different podcast. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it makes a, me think yeah. about that, yeah. that what you say of like, okay, but are we willing to take that step? Because we know, we know. And it would be really cool, right? Because you would not depend anymore on oil. No, there's always sun. There's always sun, there's always wind. It would make you super like... Um, uh, Sustainable, but also... Yeah, but also like independent. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah uh, And sure. it would make power cheaper. Yeah, if you look at Bonaire, where there's also, and I, I imagine it's on many islands, where there's also a lot of problems with like uh, income, uh, uh, people, you know, uh, uh, maybe not even being, like Germans said, being able to put on the AC. Uh, like That's having true. solar panels on your roof uh, could really also bring down energy costs, could really bring down the costs of living. Right. So yeah, it would and be also pretty amazing. bring if, down the cost yeah. of, you know, the earth exactly yeah <laughs> it's only win-win it just needs to happen we know what to do governments right. know what to do yeah right. okay i think it goes back to the conversation of how much can we do compared to how much can the government do yeah because it's the same with like with fast fashion we can stop buying fast fashion things but if they're still making fast fashion clothing and the pollution that comes from fast fashion yeah. ultimately I think the bigger, not the, both of the parties have resp the same responsibility, but the impact of one is greater yeah. than the other. But then I have to say, going back to what German said, uh, you have to be able to afford also the alternative to Definitely. fast fashion. Because quite often it's pretty expensive. Yes, yeah. like it's the same thing with the air Yeah, but you have to be able to afford it. Yeah. And so it's... But, but you're I think, right. I think in this, yeah. in this energy, there's more the reason why we should address it because if yeah, you think about it, yeah. <laughs> people cannot afford to have air conditioning. This means that if it gets hotter, they if gas prices anything. become more expensive, it only aggravates the symptoms. Yes. And to who? The most vulnerable. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yeah, absolutely so, right. That's why it's important. That's all. Okay. I think, I think we covered everything, guys. I think uh, if you're not educated on climate change and climate justice at this point, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, once again, just you know, for 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 the end of it, where can guy, where can people find information on uh, climate change, climate justice, and specifically the VU research? Yeah. So if you go to Greenpeace dot nl mm -hmm. on the website, you you can see also the campaign for climate justice from Bonaire, and you can also see our other campaigns. So if you're thinking about, I'm gonna go for skateball, this coming soon, you can click there, you can find the information. But if you, if you click on the Panera campaign, you can dive in deeper and the research is going to be published here as well. I'm also going to put the link below, share it up here. And if you want, you can also follow us on Instagram, also Greenpeace Panera. And if you want to reach out to us, if you want to contact us, you can either do it through the Instagram or you can contact us at Panera at Greenpeace.org. Right. Okay. Any final words you want to share? Any advice or any tips for anyone that is interested in this topic or wants to um give a hand in the in the in this mission, <laughs> this mission. Right. i say that we we started doing research we feel the urgency but it's not something that we want to carry alone so i really we really appreciate input from everyone as well so um me personally speaking i'm i'm directing myself towards the diaspora here in the european netherlands mm -hmm. but we also have community organizers on the island so if you can also reach out to them. If you have ideas, if you think that this is something great we should do, or if you think about this, think about that, also share with us. Like any input is also welcome. Okay. Yes. Well, we would like to thank you guys for joining us today, for educating us. Uh, it's not only uh, uh, good for us, but also very important for the whole world and everyone that is tuning in. So we appreciate you. Uh, thank you for approaching us also. Very, it, it, it means a lot for us to be able to contribute. Uh, our little grain of salt. Uh, <laughs> thank you to uh, Angel. Thank you to Keanu. And of course, thank you to Rudina for sending in her questions. Guys, you heard, you heard them. It's time to do something. And, uh, you know, every little effort or a bit of effort 
works. Definitely. Right? Yes. We'll see you next time on another episode and you know, stay safe.